कर्मण्ये अधिकारस्ते माफले कदाचन मा कर्म फल हेतु माते संगोस्व कर्मणि हैप्पीनेस इज एन इलूसिव स्टेट ऑफ माइंड not to be gained by clumsy pursuit it is given to those who do not sue for it to be unconcerned about a desired good is probably the only way to possess it this leaf so complete in itself is only part of the tree and this tree so complete in itself is only part of the forest and the forest runs down from the hill to the sea and the sea so complete in itself rests like a raindrop in the hand of god soon after independence when they were leaving india and in hordes one englishman decided to make the reverse journey after achieving success as a novelist in britain and winning awards he forsook that country to return to the land of his birth it was a move that could have ended his writing career instead he has become one of the most celebrated writers of india for almost half a century now ruskin bond has been writing stories novellas essays poems and children's books he has written over 500 short stories and articles as well as anthologies of stories of ghosts railways humor and children a sahitya academy award and padma shri winner bond is today one of the most versatile popular and most humble of indian writers Here we are in Landa Masuri which I am strongly tempted to call Bondistan because the raja of Landa Masuri lives here in this humble palace Hello Raskin are you there Hello Acha it's 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 yes yeah, <laughs> you said it hi oh, how are you and, uh, uh, nice to see you and yeah. thank you so much for coming i know about well, it's been such a long time thank you for giving your time no thank you so much let's go in okay, there okay yeah hmm? your favorite place yes so this is the view the famous view which you mention in your books Raskin tell me about your early life i have always wondered why did you come back come back to india it's a long story when i look back on it when i first went to england shortly after leaving school uh, i really had no idea if i would come back or not and my mother and stepfather had sent me off thinking i'd probably do better for myself out there but the the um the draw the um the, the bonds with with india were so strong especially my relationships friends places i'd grown up with that um very soon i was longing to come back it is very interesting that your first novel was published by the same woman um and dana atel who published uh, naipaul and uh, you won the most one of the most prestigious awards an indian writer could win in those early days yes the the, the reese prize was prestigious although it wasn't worth a great deal of money in fact book prizes then did not carry very large sums of prize money as they do today um so you had to really continue working hard you couldn't just sit back on your laurels here in dune valley's asli hall lay the little flat where the adventure of writing really got underway for bond 
working away in the light of a kerosene lamp, Bond also found time to gaze at college girls walking or cycling past Astley Hall. In The Lamp is Lit, one of his many autobiographical pieces, Bond tells us that when he came back to Dehradun after a three-year stint in London, he had just 800 rupees to start a new life. After that day in 1955, Bond has firmly stayed put here. Bond's love for the mountains and walking about in mountain towns is a very important part of his amiable personality. In Rain in the Mountains, he says, My greatest pleasure lies in taking a path, any old path will do, and following it until it leads me to a forest glade, or village, or stream, or windy hilltop. Despite his evident Indianness, Ruskin Bond has also maintained his links with his own peculiar historical origin, the Anglo-India. He has written books on hill stations set up by the earliest English visitors, has edited anthologies of ghost writings, railway stations, train stories, and various other written memorabilia associated with the Raj. After all, I grew up in um pre-independence days as a small boy, 1947 I was 12 and um, at that time being uh, either an India born European or an Anglo Indian, as I grew older I felt more and more like an Indian and uh, as I do today, um, completely Indian but, um, but it was a gradual process. But I know one thing that uh, being an Indian I take things for granted everywhere. I don't yes. notice things which you do. Yes, yes. Does that help or is that an advantage or not? Well, um, I, I too now sometimes begin to take things for granted and I have to force myself to look at, at them sort of with fresh eyes or, or in a way as an outsider would see them. And I guess railway stations are the most fascinating places to observe people, you know, and humanity on the move people coming and going, going to all destinations all over India. Um, and I, perhaps that was one of the fascinations that um, railway stations and the trains had, had for the British too, because they, they, most of them are railway buffs. Hmm? And we, we take our railway stations and trains very much for granted. The Garhwal Himalayas that Bond has so memorably recreated in each of his books has now been transformed by knee-jerk development. The displacement of people, the large-scale deforestation. How does he relate to this fast-changing life and landscape? We've got to see that they survive. Instead of, um, instead of cutting them down and, and um, doing away with uh, our forests. I, mean, I think, you see, people are more and more aware of the importance of our forest wealth. Um, and of, and of trees even individually. Hmm? Although there was a period, I'd say, in the, in the 60s and 70s when it was sort of open season on trees and a, there was a lot of deforestation. But now um, um, I think um, there's a greater, uh, 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 apart from laws that have been enacted, there's also a greater public awareness, I think, huh? uh, of the importance of, of environment in general. Why forests and trees are important for humans? Well, uh, apart from the, the sucker they give to, to wildlife and, um, and keep a balance in the climate, um, they also prevent a lot of erosion. And you, you can see um, in, in those areas in the mountains where there is no forest cover, how, how easy and how quickly it is for landslides to occur. Sometimes you hear of even whole villages being, being washed away. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, and, and you'll find that happens in, in areas where it's uh, just usually bare hillside and, and um, just not enough tree or forest cover to hold the, the earth and hold the land. You don't just need trees, you need um, bushes too and, uh, and uh, all kinds of plant life, you know. Recently, Ruskin Bond also compiled an anthology of great Indian love stories, thus completing his engagement with India by traveling into times past. Set in regions of great natural beauty, 
where Kamdev, the god of love, picks his victims with consummate ease. These stories and lyrics celebrate the myriad aspects of love. Very few Indian writers can boast of such a wide range of interests. You have done this collection of famous Indian love stories. I was very impressed. You must have spent a lot of time studying it. Well, well studying um, certainly sources uh, for, for making up this collection. One was uh, a collection of classical Indian love stories and the other um, love stories from around the world for which I did a certain amount of reading. Um, but at the same time, of course, I did, when I was in my 20s, go through my so-called romantic period when I wrote a few love stories and stories like uh, Night Train at Dioli and others in that vein. Well, I, I love this thing about you. You have mentioned in your books that uh, you were, had some kind of romances, but they did not really materialize in a, into a full-blown love affair. I guess they, they, they often were stories of, of unrequited love. And um, maybe that's the story of my life. Um, but, I, but at the same time, I feel that um, maybe that was how it should have been. In 1993, recognizing his importance as a modern Indian writer, Ruskin Bond was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award for his book, Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra. This Sahitya Academy Award must have come as a great uh, relief because it came at a time when things were not looking very good. That's right. I was, it was given to me in, in 92 or 93. and. Um, it, it was a time when I was financially not very strong, so it, it did help and um, it also um, perhaps brought me to the attention um, of publishers and the reading public. Um, and uh, I think it, it was something for which um, I was very appreciative. As I walked home last night, I saw a lone fox dancing in the bright moonlight. I stood and watched, then took the low road, knowing the night was his by right. Sometimes when words ring true, I'm like a lone fox dancing in the morning dew. For millions of Indians, adults and children alike, this Indian Englishman presents the supreme spectacle of a lone fox dancing away eternally. Long ago he ran away from school and then from England where he was a literary sensation long before most of today's celebrity writers were born. He gave up that fame and celebration for something quieter, something simpler, something gentler. The world has moved on. Ruskin Bond is now a famous writer and lives with a large adopted household in the most modest and unassuming of ways. With each passing year, he seems more and more an extension of the very habitat that has become synonymous with him. Dance on, old fox, for we remain as mesmerized today as we were when we first encountered the restless Rusty, getting rusted amidst discipline, longing to be set free, to be left to dazzle like the flight of the pigeons, fulfilling his bond with the mountains. This land is mine although I do not own it. This land is mine because I grew upon it. This dust, this grass, this tender leaf and weathered bark, all in my heart are finely blended until my time on earth is ended.